Okay, so we're here at NetworkX with Dino Flore from Qualcomm Technologies. Dino, I saw your presentation earlier around the theme of energy efficiency. Tell us, just give us the high level view. So the high level view is this, is, is a growing concern on having more sustainability in, a, in our telecom business. Uh, this is coming from governments, of course, uh, putting more regulation in place, and, but also companies becoming more and more aware and uh, deciding to move uh, into sustainable paths for uh, moving forward uh, in the coming years. At the same time, uh, a second vector uh, is the, the fact that uh, energy is a big uh, bill for operator, uh, and therefore uh, many operators in mobile networks, fixed networks, they're asking us, how can we reuse some of the, our know-how and capabilities we have from uh, the mobile side, the device side, which they, they were born to be energy efficient mm -hmm. on the network side. So if this before was a, a side thought, now it's becoming more and more as a, a key concern from operator and it's, it's a key um, effort from uh, multiple companies to address those uh, concerns. And as a Qualcomm, um, as we help operators and vendors to design the, the network of the future, we are working on multiple areas to um, provide the, our expertise to make uh, the network of the next generation more energy efficient. Uh, I listed in my presentation four areas uh, and uh, gave an example of how we are uh, improving the efficiency of the network from an energy perspective. So one area is definitely the cloud run uh, uh, and all run. Um, uh, the second area is uh, on the small cell deployments. Mm -hmm. The third area is uh, on automation and orchestration on the network where we have uh, uh, our edgewise solution that operators are using worldwide. And the fourth area, so essentially is also uh, Wi-Fi, high performance Wi-Fi, where we believe there is a lot of innovation that, uh, to be done for uh, energy efficiency networks. Yeah, I caught that theme actually, you know, we think about our mobile phones or watches, we want days worth of service out of them. So some of that low power technology ought to get into infrastructure, right? It seems uh, yeah. That's that's what we're trying to do. Again, bringing our expertise from the from the device side, uh, which was born to be <laughs> efficient, energy efficient, onto the the network side on yeah. the different aspects. Yeah, even the Wi-Fi, the home Wi-Fi, you think it's actually low power to start with, but the way you set out how you can have um, yeah different so, layers, different features depending on time of day. Absolutely, and it has become a, a key requirement for many operators. Uh, as I said in presentation, so. On average in the US or the Western European uh, uh, countries, on average in each home, these 20 plus devices connected uh, to the Wi-Fi gateway. And uh, of course, during peak times, they're all using all resources, all the bands, all the chains, all the transmitter receiver chains. But there's a lot of innovation you can do that in idle times to reduce these resources that are used and massively reduce the energy that is consumed. So uh, before was not, um, a, an aspect that was uh, carefully thought of, uh, but now as we are designing next generation products for the home and uh, the home gateways, we're putting a lot of attention to that because again, there is a strong demand from operators, mm -hmm. both from a regulatory standpoint uh, and from an just energy eff efficiency yeah. standpoint. Managed home Wi-Fi, of course, huge topic here at Network X. Absolutely. Probably the, you know, if anything, it's the topic, I guess. I think you mentioned, um, you know, environmental um, uh, uh, responsibilities and commitments, price of energy. Perhaps as a third, I'd throw at you. Um, what we found quite often, if if an operator wants to land a big contract with, let's say, a large corporate, a government agency, and so forth, they very often also have to prove their not just their commitment, but show how they're actually working to reduce energy consumption. So I think that, that that's sense. another thing that to get the big uh, to get the yep. big customers, you have to do this, you know, just, Absolutely. just to be competitive. There are many drivers. Um, and again, it's, the discussion is converging that this is going to be a big thing on how we architect the natural networks of the future. So again, and that's why we are working across all these areas, uh, the home areas, the macro network areas, this orchestration area, the small cell densification area. So I think they're all equally important. Also because next generation networks will not be a, a, a unicum and uh, a monolithic block. It's going to be a more heterogeneous network where we are the macro network, 
there is uh, some infrastructure computing that is moved onto the cloud. Mm -hmm. There is uh, uh, some small cells to complement the micro network in the or indoor or some menus. There is Wi-Fi complementing uh, the 5G network. So we are looking at each of those aspects and some orchestration layer on top of that and try to, with each of these techniques, to contribute to the overall energy spending, uh, yeah. try to reduce that. A whole, a whole mix of solutions. And I know it's just on your, on your small cell point, you, um, you were specific to say, well, we're talking about intelligently placed or located small cells. Yes, the small cell should not be intended, again, uh, the point was not to have a blanket deployment of small cell or hyperdensification, that's another discussion. But we, what we found out that some intelligently placed uh, small cell can do reduce uh, the operator uh, consumption of energy. And one way to, one case, for example, as an example to think about it is uh, that even in the micro network, really, a lot of the micro resources from the towers, uh, they are used from a, uh, from a few critical users that are at the cell edge. Mm -hmm. Like the 10% of the users, they are in critical uh, cell edge uh, um, conditions and they require the, the micro to blast off resources to cover them. How about an operator gives them uh, um, small cells to these problematic users, so ad hoc, uh, very surgical, but you can give small cells so that they don't require the network to waste tons of resources to reach them out. So uh, we have studied some cases, uh, we have multiple scenarios where we have an analyzed that you can gain 10, 20% uh, in energy by just intelligently placing some small cells in the net. Yeah, okay. one imagines uh, indoor would have the same, some of the same benefits as well if they're more and better dedicated indoor systems. Correct, Correct. Yeah. so because some of the indoor users they will be at the cell edge sure. condition, it will require the micro network to blast resources to blast power to reach them indoors and of course for this uh, yep. for these users which are problematic and a solution could be that give them a small cells and just yeah so I wanted also to get in there before we finish into the uh, open RAN VRAN cloud RAN topic I mean I know Qualcomm you have an RU um, uh, product and a DU product I guess um, before you know before before we get into that how um, I get one of the challenges as you disaggregate systems, are you essentially losing opportunities to, to be efficient and to optimize power consumption? Yeah. So um, there is the, the disaggregation aspect, but there is also the, the point is once you disaggregate, uh, um, how you reassemble, how do you run your uh, computing tasks so that they are the, in the most energy efficient way? And what we found out is, for example, uh, one solution we have been uh, now advocating and proposing is a solution we have done for the, the DU, where uh, the heavy L1 processing is run through in its entirety in the L1, in, the, in what we call an L1 accelerator card, because we found that that for this uh, heavy workloads where you have a massive MIMO configuration with high speed, low latency applications, uh, deployment scenarios, that's the most power efficient way. And we had done comparison with the alternative approaches that the industry is following, where you offload to the accelerator only selected functions like forward error correct encoding. And uh, in that case, we have seen uh, gains of 40%. So obviously in the process of disaggregating, you're right, you can lose some efficiency. So you have to be very careful now you then uh, you re uh, put things together and then how do you run uh, the computing task in the most efficient way. And what we found out again, in the case of the DU, was the, to put uh, all the L1 in the, um, in the accelerator card. That was the most efficient. It will have a tremendous impact on the gains. Yeah. And uh, this will help over it because uh, one thing I showed in the presentation, so 20 to 40% of the operator OPEX today is driven by run energy consumption. And uh, of course, the DU is one aspect. We also are working on the radio unit. Also on the radio unit, thanks to our technology, driven by the mobile, uh, the terminal side, we can bring the latest technology node for the, from the fabs. We can bring the highest level of integration. And just because of that, we can gain uh, even easily 10% over the leading uh, tier one uh, radio unit operator. So again, it's another example where we are bringing our know-how and our uh, technology 
to reduce uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the the RU and the RF chain in general has been, I guess, the most resistant to to efficiency gain o o over time. Yeah, the, uh, and it's also the. Uh, by the way, is the lion's share of the what I said. Uh, um, so the run consumes seventy percent on the of the overall uh, energy consumption in the network. And the lion share is the radio unit, and it, it's also the harder one. So there is a lot of uh, the RFs, and that uh, is difficult. So, yeah. but we like difficult problems. So uh, a, lo uh, a lot of scope for for inventive um, companies yes. and engineers. Um, Dina from Qualcomm, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.